really put a shining light on this high value man. Like you didn't, you really like done took this thing and just like, like everybody, you know what? I, I think every time I see somebody, I think everybody trying to be high value now. <laughs> I mean, right. Everybody trying to be high value. Like you done took this thing and took it to the scrap stratosphere. And uh, I think that's, that's a good thing, brother. Um, mm -hmm. but what I want to know is I think a lot of guys and cause I, I want to get it from you myself. What attributes do you think make a high value man? Okay. Well, first of all, I want to be a hundred percent clear. Mm -hmm. High value is not my original idea. That's mm -hmm. been with us for a long time. Yes. Yeah. You know, so what I did is I went ahead and just kind of put a kind of a framework around what I thought what people would talk about when they meant high value. So let me go ahead and put it on the screen. Mm -hmm. One, 52 years old. Mm -hmm. When this whole thing about I need a six figure man came out, that came out between 1983, 1985. Mm -hmm. That's when that became popular. Right. And what that means is roughly you need to make about a hundred thousand dollars a year or more mm -hmm. to, to, to get a ticket to the game. And that means if you in Atlanta dollars, Dallas mm -hmm. dollars, Houston dollars, Birmingham mm -hmm. dollars, mm -hmm. if you in LA dollars or New York dollars, you need to make more. Right. Now, what pisses most people off about that is because guys get mad mm -hmm. uh, because they don't meet that mark. You and right. me didn't make that. Right. We just deal with, see, we deal with the world as it is. Right. And we just say, if this is what it is, this is what it is. And then you have to make that money over an extended period of time. Right. Anybody could have been Jeremy Lin and had a good seven games. Right. <laughs> but you ain't going to the Hall of Fame on Jeremy Lin stuff. Right. So roughly five years in a row, because that just shows you can be consistent, work a program, stay focused. And you're really on the verge of being high value. From a money standpoint, if you've been doing it at least about three years, you're in striking distance. Right. The next thing I think is the next ones will start to get more important. Right. Number three, you have you are recognized by other men that are high value. They see you as their peer mm -hmm. or their potential peer. Mm. They see you and say that young dude got it coming. He he's got the right stuff. Right. I'm gonna keep my eye on him. Right. Because why that's important because being high value is like a little fraternity of sorts. Right. Because once you start getting into a certain uh, area, um, the, the problems change and you need to have a network mm -hmm. of high value men and other people. You right. can't have a network of just alphas. You can't have right. a network of just CEOs. Mm -hmm. You need some technicians. You know, mm -hmm. you, you may, you may be the Don, but you need some button men. Mm -hmm. and some capos and some knee breakers too. Mm -hmm. And then I think the other parts, then these are far more come down to the, the people skills, visibility. Mm -hmm. LinkedIn level is something I say, you know, basically folks need to kind of understand at a glance who you are and what you do. So right. to say that I'm a personal trainer at Gold's Gym or I'm right. over VP of mergers and acquisitions at Goldman mm -hmm. Sachs mm -hmm. is it's different than saying I'm an entrepreneur. Right. The entrepreneur could make more than all of them, but you got to do more digging with the entrepreneur mm -hmm. stuff. So it needs kind of to be visible because the most important thing I think in high value, and this is irrespective of morals, and anything else, because everybody's morals and religion can be different. You have to be useful. Mm -hmm. Utility. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as a high value loaner. Mm. You need to be useful to others and the group. Mm. Meaning if I can't tap AMS's network. Mm -hmm. if I can't tap his his contacts. If I can't mm -hmm. tap his resources, mm -hmm. how valuable is he to everybody else? Mm -hmm. So while many people want to focus on what's at the bottom, notice where it is at the bottom, the money. Right. You can make money, but right. to have that network, have that mm -hmm. respect for other high value men, mm -hmm. to have that that the, the utility comes with time, work. And experience now. Mm. Why aren't morals, character, and ethics? Because you can be a high value nihilist, you can right. be a high value atheist, a right. Muslim, Buddhist. Mm -hmm. That and this high value thing, men worldwide throughout time have separated themselves from the other guys. So this is just the kind of framework to talk about concepts that guys have always talked about: hypergamy, mm -hmm. high value, all this mm -hmm. stuff. This mm -hmm. is just a framework to get a conversation started, and right. I think that's what really tipped it off. When I said what made men high value to other men, right? Not to women, to mm -hmm. other men, right? And then the women are just the byproduct of doing 
the high value, the work. That's what they come. That's where they come into this. So, oh, okay. I like that, Kevin. I like that. I think a lot of people when when they think of uh, you and a high value thing, they think of money. But mm -hmm. I, you putting this on the screen, I think you cleared that up for a lot of guys. That is more about networking and being visible to other guys and respected. Y'all guys get that? It's more about being respected mm -hmm. and having a solid network. Yes. And when you got a solid network, it's hard for you to fall. Like Jay Z yeah. said, hard <laughs> to fall because we all use to sell as crutch. Uh, mm -hmm. I know I'm not saying that lyrically, right? But y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, mm -hmm. And so, but another thing, uh, Kevin, want to talk about everybody want to be a high value man. Everybody want to be a high value man. But do guys really know what happens when you become a high value man? Can they handle that? Can you handle the hate? Not just by your peers and contemporaries, but also your family members and your friends. Everybody, you know, thinks you owe them something and stuff like that. How can guys prepare themselves once they become a high value man to deal with the hate, deal with the expectation? Everybody wants you to do something for them. It, it, you, everybody, I think y'all guys just see guys riding around in the bins and they dress nice and stuff like this. But do y'all guys know what comes with it? You got people that's going to try to tear you down. They want to, you know, they got this crab in a barrel. What can mm -hmm. guys do to prepare themselves for that mentality, Kevin? First off, you can be an exceptional man and not have to be high value mm -hmm. you don't have to be and high value is something that neither you or i made mm -hmm. we're just dealing with that construct right so i want to be clear you yes. can be a man of value a high right. impact man i often call them productive competitive successful men mm -hmm. those are different than high value high value is basically asking to take the last shot right you're asking to kick the game winning field goal you're asking the coach to put you in at mm. crunch time mm. And see, this is why I don't think it, you can be a high value man under 30. One, because mm -hmm. you need that five years to make that money. Two, you need time to build a network. Right. Three, uh, because the easy come, easy go. This is why mm -hmm. I do not automatically consider athletes, entertainers, or musicians high value mm -hmm. because they make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But how often do we see them balling? In one regard, then 10, 15 years later, they on Iyana mm -hmm. Van Zandt fixed my life. Right. Because they've mismanaged our money and opportunities. Right. How high value, the pressure that comes with being a high value man is better mm -hmm. associated with understanding and having mentors and other high value men as peers. I think I like that what you said, mentors. Yes. I see a lot of guys sleep on mentors, Kevin. Well, see, that's the thing. What I know is men who are in the top 10% of all men mm -hmm. all tend to have coaches. Mm. and mentors mm. tom brady got a coach mm -hmm. he got a throwing coach mm -hmm. and see what matters so much more than anything else is when you get those attacks mm -hmm. those challenges mm -hmm. that are coming mm -hmm. other high value men who recognize you as a peer that's mm -hmm. when you'll get the text out of the bra out of the blue keep your mm -hmm. head up bro keep doing what you're doing i i see you mm -hmm. because those are other beacons of light throughout the world who are at the top. It's lonely up there. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so when you're asking for the, the number one seat, you're asking for all the accountability, all mm -hmm. the heat, all the smoke. Mm -hmm. So one, you need to be ready to take it. You mm -hmm. need to be ready for your name to be in everybody's mouth and 99% of them be wrong, including mm -hmm. people who claim to know you. Mm. So I look at, I look at, uh, regardless of what anybody's political affiliation is, look at Donald Trump and Barack Obama. Mm -hmm. Two different sides, same coin. But mm -hmm. they both had a, an, a tremendous amount of pushback. Mm -hmm. But they did it. They kept going their own. That The way they did it, they handled it in a different way. Right. See, high value is just that. If it's not tested, AMS, if it's not mm -hmm. tested, Mm -hmm. It's not worth it. All right, you good. We saw you win. But show me what happens when you get knocked down. How mm -hmm. do you rise? Do you mm -hmm. rise? Mm -hmm. Do you get back? Do you get stronger? Mm -hmm. What happens? And that's why, you know, being high value is so prized by the world. Right. I agree, Kevin. Let me ask.